Hello and welcome to the heavily anticipated debut for Magic the Gathering Fallout. We have quite the week for you. We are going to preview all four Fallout Commander decks Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, into Friday this week. We are going to start out by highlighting one deck each day. We're going to talk about the Scrappy Survivors deck, headed by Dogmeat today. Hail Caesar is going to get the spotlight tomorrow. And then we've got Mutant Menace on Thursday before we cap things off at Magicon Chicago with the Science, I've been told that's how I have to pronounce it, deck. Um, <laughs> And at that panel, we are going to have two huge Fallout fans who also happen to be Magic designers. And they're here today with us as well. They're over this way. They're over this way. We're going to see. Uh, let's meet Annie and Chris. Uh, tell the folks about yourself. All right. Hi, I'm Annie. I'm a senior game designer here and the lead for this product of Fallout. I'm Chris Mooney. Uh, I'm also a senior game designer. Uh, I was not the lead for this product, but I did do a lot of work, so yeah. <laughs> I'm here as well. Yep, and, and huge follow-up fans, like I said, so they're, they're very excited to talk about this. We're going to dive right into it, because I know you're excited. Um, I've, I've been watching some of the reactions online to some of the cards that have come out recently, and uh, you're all loving this. So let's just dive into it. Let's look at some cards. Let's start by learning about some decks. So Annie, tell us about the Scrappy Survivors sure, yeah. deck. First up, we got a deck headed by a dog meat, the bestest boy. Uh, this deck is all about suiting up one creature with a bunch of auras and equipment, uh, sort of to represent all of the gear and leveling up you do while playing Fallout, and uh, yeah, scavenging for loot with uh, the new junk token mechanic. All right. And our first preview card here is a legendary character in this deck. Chris, tell us about Sophia. All right, yeah, here we have Command Commander Sophia Daguerre. Um, this is a character from Fallout 76. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about is how we really wanted to show off the entire history of the Fallout franchise. Mm -hmm. So all the way from the original game of Fallout 1, way up to you know the most recent game, which was Fallout 76. So Commander Sophia Daguerre, she was an astronaut um, when you know the bombs fell, and so she was stuck in space for a while. Uh, in Fallout 76, uh, she crash lands here, uh, and you get to you know meet her and help her out. Um, here we can see the crash landing ability. Yep. So one of the fun things uh, that we do with Universes Beyond sets is that we like to have these flavor words, which just help to add some flavor and texture from the various you know different mm -hmm. things that we're pulling from. And here in Fallout, something we thought would be really fun would be to bring in um, the names of quests that you get in the Fallout games. There are tons of NPCs, different characters that you'll meet on your journeys through the Fallout games, and they all have different quests that are heavily associated with them. Here, Crash Landing is the name of the quest that is associated with Sophia. It's her mainline quest. And you're going to see a bunch more of that moving forward of different characters with their iconic quest lines on their cards. OK. What's a junk token? Ah, yes, a junk token. So this is the new, this is the new token. Um, it's made primarily by the Scrappy Survivors deck, but there might be a, a few that show up in the other decks. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's really fun about Fallout, uh, and I'm sure that anyone who's played the games has done a lot of this, you walk through the wasteland and you just pick up tons and tons of scrap. I can't stop. Yeah, your inventory's full of garbage. And my um, companions try to tell me to stop, I don't. <laughs> that's right. You give your companions, you know, like a huge, you're like, oh, you guys carry all of my scrap because I've got to pick up even more scrap. Um, so we, something that we wanted to capture a fun kind of iconic element of the Fallout games. Um, the thing about junk is that uh, you never quite know what you're going to need it for uh, and what you're going to be able to do with it. Um, you know, these games all have crafting systems where you can take all the components of all that junk you've picked up and build it into other things. Um, so we thought it would be a fun, uh, fun mechanic here of these junk tokens allowing you to get additional cards, but you're never quite sure what you're going to get. So you might want to hold on to that junk for a little bit, wait until the perfect moment uh, to craft it into something. Um, or if you're getting desperate, maybe you just gotta you know crack it right away. So junk was a really fun way of um, you know getting some additional cards into the game while also adding in a lot of variance and, and flavor, Fallout flavor. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at our next card. Annie, tell us about Idolized. Ooh, Idolized. Okay. So this is sort of like a player status of sorts. So when you see perks, which are like the Fallout specific word for skills you get when you level up, or like statuses like idolize, um, those are going to be expresses, enchantments, auras, uh, stuff like that. So here we got idolize, which is where everyone in a certain faction or town really, really likes you. You've done some, you've done some things that they like, 
and that's expressed mechanically by uh, all your different non-land permanents giving you a little buff when you go out there and start fighting alone on their behalf. So also, oh, I got the showcase pit boy. Yeah, okay. so uh, tell us about some of the treatments here in this set. Okay, yeah, so this is an example of the showcase pit boy treatment. Uh, there's 26 cards with this treatment. Uh, you're gonna see the four face commanders with it and then some other cards uh, idolize as one of those. And you can find these in the collector booth series only. All right, so. very cool. Uh, next up, our next preview card, Chris, we're going to jump back over to you for, I, I, I love some of the names in this, <laughs> Three Dog Galaxy News DJ. That's right. So uh, Three Dog is a, a very memorable character from Fallout 3. If you played throughout Fallout 3, uh, if, you, if you didn't happen to meet Three Dog, you almost certainly have heard his voice. He is the DJ for Galaxy News Radio, which is um, the premier radio station uh, in the wasteland. Uh, for Fallout 3, I should say. Um, and yeah, so you can see here that Three Dog, uh, a lot of the cards in the Scrappy Survivors deck, right, are themed around uh, equipment and or auras. And in this case, Three Dog, uh, you know, takes one of your auras and broadcasts it across the wasteland to all of your creatures. Um, so really fun to find different things that, are, um, you know, are super cool to copy, especially if you've got auras that maybe have, um, you know, enter the battlefield effects, you can copy that quite a large number of times. Um, and we thought it was, you know, again, trying to capture the flavor, the essence of these characters, Three Dog being a DJ, just kind of, you know, blasting that information out so that everyone can benefit from it across the wasteland uh, in a fun way. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we have, back to you, Annie, Perception Bobblehead. So we, we've seen one bobblehead yeah. before, so I, tell us about these. Yeah, I think we've seen the Intelligence Bobblehead. So yep. here's Perception. Um, and you can make assumptions about, you know, the special stats as to what the others are. <laughs> um, but yeah, perception we have here, uh, as you can see, now you can see this pattern with intelligence is that each has like the scaling X effect on it. Uh, so yeah, just stay tuned for the rest. See what you're going to, you know, with the X, you get to scale up based on how many bobbleheads you have. Um, so collect them all. <laughs> Speaking of collecting them all, yeah. we did, uh, I think, at the first look, talk about the fact that the bobbleheads are serialized, correct? Yes, they are serialized out of 500. Uh, they're, again, found in collector boosters. And when you find them, they'll be in this double rainbow foil treatment. So, not, cool. not And all, picture, all seven but... have the serialized? Yes. Great. See, so, oh, yeah. So you can find, <clears throat> honestly, if you find 101, please hit me up because that's <laughs> my favorite vault. So just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now um, this is a commander set, and as such, uh, we do have some reprints that are flavored after the world. So, Chris, why don't you tell us about our uh, next card, which is a reprint, but it's pretty cool Pure Steel Paladin. Yeah, so here we have Pure Steel Paladin. So, one of the really fun things about Fallout was that there are, um, you know, a couple different factions in the world, but primarily the Brotherhood of Steel mm -hmm. that. Um, use kind of fantasy language and nomenclature, you know, to describe themselves. Um, you know, the the Brotherhood of Steel, they're all, you know, knight themed, and, you know, they're, they have different ranks like Paladin um, and Scribe, and etc. cetera. Um, so uh, that gave us a lot of fun opportunities that we had to take some of these, you know, more fantasy sounding names and creature types and bring them into this world in a way that was fully authentic. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, Pure Steel Paladin, again, this is a deck that is going to have a lot of, you know, equipment, a lot of artifacts and play with the junk tokens. So it made sense mechanically. And what an awesome, you know, reconcepting, a, a new flavor to put on this name and this type line. So we were really excited to be able to get to bring in some of those classic magic cards mm -hmm. in a way that, uh, you know, otherwise might not have been uh, expected. Yeah, I think honestly, picking out the reprints was sometimes just as fun as designing the new cards because there are some really clever little things yeah. to find. Yeah, we'll see a couple more, I think, yeah. today of fun classic magic card names that have given a new context mm -hmm. in the Fallout universe. Absolutely. Uh, let's, let's take a look at the next one, actually, the next reprint. Uh, Annie, this is Heroic Intervention. All right, so I think you'd be hard-pressed to play one of these decks that go all in on one creature without having a way to protect that creature. So we have Heroic Intervention, a tried and true uh, great commander card. Uh, and we're showcasing uh, one of your companions, Nick Valentine, on this, uh, who has always got your back. Very good guy. Uh, we'll learn more about him later. <laughs> so. 
Um, now, of course, it wouldn't be a commander set without some of the staples. So, Chris, show us this version of Arcane Signet. That's right. So, you know, one of the fun things about making these Universes Beyond Commander products is getting to take some staples that we print, you know, in e essentially every Commander deck and just finding new art, new concepts for them that fit in the world. So here, um, the, on the left side with the main set Arcane Signet, we've got your, your wedding ring from Fallout 4. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, players of Fallout 4 will, you know, remember the, the, the tragic fate that your spouse meets in that game. Mm -hmm. um, so here's something to remember them by. Yeah, it's just like instantly in your inventory. I don't know if you're one of the people who sold it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, definitely, so. Um, we got to make space for all that junk. It's true. got to make space for um, that. And then on the right side here with the borderless vault boy treatment, we've got um, your pip boy. Uh, this is, you know, the, the classic iconic item that you've got in all the Fallout games that holds your inventory, your map, all your quests, your stats, and so on and so forth. A key part of any Fallout protagonist's arsenal. Um, but I would also say there, we'll see more Pip-Boys. We, we will forward. see more yeah. Pip-Boys. Speaking of which, Annie, where uh, the... the Vault Boy is in Collector Boosters, correct? That yeah, treatment? this Borderless Vault Boy treatment is on nine different cards, and they are, again, only in Collector Boosters. So. All right. Um, and then, of course, wouldn't be a Commander product without Soul Ring. So, Annie, tell us what's going on in the art here. Nice. Yeah, we got two, actually, rather different concepts going on here again. Uh, uh, Circle of Nuka Cola Quantum uh, is the Soul Ring in the main decks. And again, like all four decks are going to share the same one. Um, and the other one is just a Vault Boy saying, hey, there is some shiny nonsense out there in Wasteland. <laughs> I, Do your best. <laughs> I got to so. say that one of the things that I love is um, Whenever we do soul rings, I love finding ways to actually, you know, right. incorporate the soul part, like the sun. Yeah. And this was one of my first things when I found out we were doing this product. One of my first pictures was doing a soul ring that is the ring of light coming through the vault door, mm -hmm. which is a ring. It just felt like, you know, it perfectly came yeah. together. It's a very iconic scene in the series when yeah, you first crack open that vault door the vault, and yeah. seeing the outside for the first mm -hmm. time. So I'm super glad that we got to do this one. Fantastic. Now, uh, as I said, Scrappy Survivors is kind of the deck of the day. So previews that will be going on around the internet after this show are going to focus on Scrappy Survivors. Uh, you can head to dailymtg.com, and there is an article called Where to Find Magic the Gathering Fallout Previews, and that's going to tell you where to look for additional previews today and every day this week. Um, but even though we are focusing on the Scrappy Survivors deck, today as a whole this is the debut we do what we want so we're going to talk a little bit about each of the decks and show cards from each of the decks uh and next we are going to move on to the deck that you'll be talking about uh this friday at the panel science 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 yeah uh, <laughs> so, Annie, <laughs> oh my god what is going on in the uh, science deck all right so this is a deck where you're going to be playing a lot of artifacts in order to generate energy and then sort of use Dr. Madison Lee as a sort of toolbox to do lots of different things with that energy, one of which is reanimating a giant robot. Uh, so here it is. <laughs> All right, Chris. Liberty Prime Recharged. Tell us about this robot. Yeah, so of all of the things in the Fallout games, Liberty Prime was probably near the top of our list of things that we need to make a card out of. I mean, giant robot stomping around, shooting laser beams. It just, like, you know, that makes for a great magic card. Obviously. <laughs> um, and in the story, so Liberty Prime has showed up in both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, and in both games, a big part of the story of Liberty Prime was powering it up. You know, mm -hmm. this is a post-apocalypse. They don't have unlimited mm -hmm. energy. So finding ways of, pow you know, providing energy to Liberty Prime is super important. Um, and, you know, since energy is the theme of the deck, here we've got Liberty Prime, who you need to have enough energy to keep him running um, to actually be able to, use, to you know, use him as a creature and attack with him. So we mm -hmm. love that idea for the concept of a card. It felt the, it fit the deck perfectly. And also, um, like Annie was talking about, Dr. Madison Lee, who also shows up in both Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 and is heavily involved with Liberty Prime, wanted to make sure that they sort of you know, could work together. Mm -hmm. And so 
Matt, using Madison Lee, using that energy to reanimate Liberty Prime, yeah. you really get the flavor victory uh, if you make that happen. She can't escape it. She has to, I don't know, she just ends up preparing it in every game, even though she wants to like be a good person. And, like, well, you know, you, <laughs> so can, you can always use her other abilities if you, yeah, you know, want to play out that version of the story. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's put Liberty Prime back up there for one moment. Uh, so that extended version, we haven't talked about the extended version and where to find extended versions, Annie. Yeah, I believe there's extended versions of every rare in mm -hmm. Mythic. Uh, yeah, found in Collector Boosters. Found so. in Collector Boosters. All right, great. Um, now, you, Annie, hinted at this earlier, but uh, Nick Valentine, Private Eye, is in this Yeah, set. here he is in the flesh, uh, question mark. <laughs> uh, so Nick Valentine is a synth, which is a synthetic being. So he is kind of a robot, but uh, synth is a very important lore term in Fallout. So we gave it its own creature type here. And basically, we just tried to express a top-down detective, which, guess what? He's a detective. Thank you, MKM. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, Nick Valentine, uh, he helps you investigate where your son went, because uh, your son gets captured at the beginning of Fallout, and you got to go hunt down what all went happened to him. And Nick has a lot of intrigue around synths and the Institute and all the stuff going on in Fallout 4. So he's a great companion if you ever want to hang out with him. Uh, but yeah, he's a great guy. Great guy. All right. Um, now, one of the other cool aspects of this is uh, are the vaults. Uh, obviously, vaults are a huge part of the Fallout games, and so we had to recreate those. So, uh, Chris, tell us about Vault 112 Sadistic Simulation. Yeah, so uh, Vault 112 is, well, let's talk about the vaults in general. So, for the, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to go into the full lore breakdown of all the vaults, but uh, in the games of Fallout, the vaults are kind of like the, the sort of dungeons. They are these self-contained underground areas where, you know, people lived, but things tend not to go well for people in the Fallout universe. And each of them, when you journey down into them, you learn the story of, the, of what happened to the people there. Uh, and so we thought that sagas were a really fun way of capturing those stories. So all of the vaults, um, the stories of, of, not all of the vaults that exist in Fallout, <laughs> but all of the cards that represent the vault stories in our set are these sagas. So you'll see a number of these sagas throughout the different decks that represent famous vaults um, throughout the games. In particular, Vault 112 is from Fallout 3, and the story here was um, they sort of created a virtual reality universe for people to live in. People, like, they're in these little pods mm -hmm. that you can see here in the art, and they exist in this virtual reality universe so that they wouldn't have to deal with the... Um, you know, the, the mundane these of living in an underground bunker for so long. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, we get to live in this. But of course, as I mentioned before, things tend to not go very well in the Fallout universe, and the simulation was sort of maliciously taken over, um, if it was even, you know, not malicious to begin with. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> um, so, you know, this uh, card, you know, taps some creatures down. They're stuck in the simulation trying to escape. Um, but also, as part of the story in Fallout 3, when you go into this vault, you make some very large discoveries, some big revelations about the overall mm -hmm. story, which I won't spoil for anyone who maybe wants to play the game in the future. But uh, this final chapter here represents that grand discovery and unlocking that you, you make at the end of that tale. Very cool. All right, let's move on to our next preview card, Annie. The T-45 Power Armor. All right, so here it is. One of the most iconic things in Fallout is the power armor. It's all over the cover. And uh, <laughs> so here, again, the power armor runs on energy, kind of like Liberty Prime. You got a whole bag full of fusion cores <laughs> that you're always paranoid about using. And here we also kind of express with these keyword counters, like how you can modify your armor throughout the game. And it's just sort of a fun little suit of armor. I don't know. I always use the power armor because I'm a baby. I don't know. <laughs> so. All right. So from power armor to a reprint, Chris, you were just talking about the vaults. Uh, this next one is aptly named Open the Vaults. That's right. Um, the, so like I said before, it was so much fun finding these, you know, classic magic cards with names that could fit in this setting so perfectly. Open the Vaults, um, in addition to... Uh, having a great name mechanically fit with what the deck wanted to do, you know, like bringing back all of this stuff uh, and flavorfully and Fallout. 
um, the opening of the vaults and having all of this old world stuff coming out into the wasteland. Um, so it was just a great fit overall. Um, we did make a lot of vault jokes uh, while <laughs> making this product, trying to figure out how many different vault reprints we could get in. Yeah. Uh, sadly, Limdul's Lim vault did not here. make the cut. Uh, Limdul not in the Fallout world yet. Yeah, sadly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. not yet. But, but we got, we've got a few <laughs> cool ones in there. All right, speaking of cool reprints, we got two more to reveal from the science deck. So Annie, show us mechanized production. Oh yeah, so here is a flashy one for the artifact enjoyers out there. It also has an alt win con on it. So y'all probably know this card, but you can enchant any artifact you like and start making a bunch of copies of it. So maybe you're producing uh, counterfeit bottle caps and treasure or whatever, or maybe you put it on a bobblehead to see how many of those you can collect to get that X, X scaling way up there. Um, but regardless, it's just a really fun card and felt just at home uh, in this deck. So. All right, and our last reprint from the science deck. Uh, Chris, show us Solemn Simulacrum. So Solemn Simulacrum, a uh, you know commander staple classic, um, that you know everyone will likely recognize. Um, there are so many great simulacrums in Fallout to pick from. In this case, uh, this is uh, Ada from uh, Fallout for uh, the DLC. What was the DLC called? The Automatron. The With Automatron. the mechanist right. in it, yeah. Um, but so this is uh, that was a, a DLC all about building your own robots, and Ada here is one of a, a robot companion that you can um, yeah. recruit. And so we just thought, you know, great classic artifact creature from Commander, uh, and there are certainly a lot of sad robots in Fallout, so um, <laughs> it was easy to include here. Yeah, it, I mean, I wish we could have gave her her own card, but because you can like customize how she looks and all that, it's like, don't really know what to make her look like, so we just put her <laughs> on a reprint, so. All right, let's move on to our next deck. Mutant Menace. So Annie, what's going on in the All right, Mutant this is a Menace weird deck? one. Say hi to the wise Mothman, one of the many mutants you can find in this deck. This deck is all about irradiating your opponents, uh, which are a type of counter. So we also fool with proliferate and plus one plus one counters and milling yourself. It's it's a weird little eclectic bunch of mutants, which felt very fitting for Fallout and all its wacky creatures. So. All right, and our first preview card from the Mutant Menace deck. Chris, tell us about Hancock Ghoulish Mare. Yeah, so um, ghouls in Fallout are um, these kind of mutant zombie, um, and they, uh, you know, they've been mutated by radiation, and there's different types. There are the sort of uh, mindless ghouls that roam the wasteland that mm -hmm. are, you know, just attack on sight. Um, but then there's also ghouls that have held on to, you know, their personality, to their humanity. Um, and, you know, here's one such, Hancock. Um, the ghouls are not always welcome in wasteland society uh, because of, you know, their um, features. <laughs> um, but also because of the, you know, you know prejudice against the, the mindless ghouls that attack. Mm -hmm. um, but so Hancock here is the mayor of Good Neighbor, which is a, a little town, a settlement that they've created so that um, ghouls, but also anyone else who is unwelcome in the rest of the wasteland, can find uh, salvation there. Um, so Hancock here, um, you know, get, you know, is gonna is a leader of all of these, you know, in this case, zombies and mutants, um, and you know. Uh, it will just provide, you know, an additional Lord style effect yeah, yeah. Um, the, for all of his zombie friends. The Undying is sort of a call out to how like uh, ghouls are really long lived. Like they can be alive for hundreds of years, basically. So yeah, the uh, not every ghoul has Undying, but yeah. for 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 a classic, um, you know, high profile ghoul character, we wanted to make sure that that was captured in a fun way. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. All right, Annie, you had mentioned radiation counters. Yes. Which which we. Touched on in the first look, but here, let's look at our next preview card, Nuclear Fallout, and talk about how these counters are used. Okay, so this is a big board wipe uh, referencing the Great War uh, and the dropping of a bunch of atomic bombs that ruined the world. Way to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but basically here, the rad counters on players... Um, Depending on how many you have, oh yeah, see there's the there's a the text. Uh, they mill you for that many cards. You check how many non-land cards you milled, lose that much life, they remove that many counters. So eventually you'll get rid of the counters, but you will inevitably take that much damage along the way. 
Um, we wanted to make sure these were sort of non-deterministic so that you still felt like sticking in the game, even though you had a bunch of rat on you, like, hey, maybe you won't lose that much life. You never know. It's up, it's up to the top of your deck, right? So Right. The, the journey of rad counters was, at the beginning, when we had rads, they used to, uh, it was like a half-life joke where you yeah. lost half your rads, and then you lost that much life. Mm -hmm. um, but A, people like don't like doing that much math. <laughs> And B, it was right. Like Annie said, it was too predictable. Like, oh, I know I'm going to lose this much life, so I guess I'm already dead. Yeah. Um, so the milling, not only does it allow it to hook the rad counters into other effects in the deck that care about milling, mm -hmm. but also it adds in that unpredictability and still gets that radiative, you know, the radiation decay kind of feeling in there of, you know, like slowly over time you're going to lose it, but you don't know exactly how fast. Oh, yeah, I want to give a shout out to this art because I think it really captures the tone of Fallout super well. Like, Fallout has this sort of twisted Americana to it where, like, everything was, like, so idyllic and retro futurist, uh, juxtaposed with, like, this nasty wasteland full of radiated monsters that we have now. So, yeah, chat. Chat is loving the art as well. Great. Um, so, <laughs> Are there ways to, you know, you're talking about uh, the radiation counters. Are, are there ways in the deck to manipulate count the rad counters? You get a lot. You get, you get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely, um, there's proliferate things. Yeah, like mostly proliferate on getting more, board. yeah. Right. Um, and there's definitely a lot of cards that add the rad counters uh, in this deck and a few in other decks as well. Um, one additional thing is that in the Fallout games, um, rad's typically not a good thing to take, but... You know, sometimes taking a little bit of radiation uh, might give you an extra power or, you know, might give you a little bit of a um, mutant strength. Yeah, so yeah. we definitely also made a couple of cards that make it good for you to uh, radiate yourself. Um, so you can you can also play along uh, yeah. with the radiation. No, strategy. your mutant creatures are going to they're going to love it. They're yeah. going to be like, ooh, <laughs> milling. I love that. But uh, as for you, you got to make sure you don't run out of cards in your library. So. Right. <laughs> Or life total. Yes, true. All right, and we're going to show one reprint from this uh, deck. Chris, tell us about Guardian Project. Yeah, so here is Guardian Project. Um, this is representing Project Unity, um, which was the so back in the older Fallout games. So we we've touched upon. We touched upon a lot of things from the modern Fallout games. This is from the classic Fallout games. Here we have, uh, in the foreground here, we had the Master, who is probably one of the grossest of all of the <laughs> Fallout creations. Um, but he believed that um, super mutants were the, you know, um, the true future of humanity. And so his project, uh, Project Unity, was created to try and turn everyone in the wasteland into super mutants, leave the, you know, the confines of humans behind and enter the world of super mutants, um, which is a plot that you, uh, well, I mean, I disrupted it, I guess, when I played the game, but perhaps other people chose made different choices. Yeah, did you join? <laughs> um, <laughs> So here, um, Guardian Project, you know, he's creating these, you know, large super mutants. It was a fun reprint, certainly uh, high profile in Commander, um, and was felt like a great way to touch back on one of these uh, old classic Fallout plot lines. Very cool. All right, if the Mutant Menace deck is for you, there are going to be more of those preview cards on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow's deck is the next one we're going to talk about, which is. Hail Caesar. So, Annie, tell us about the Hail Caesar deck. All right. Well, here's Kaisar. Um, <laughs> he is the leader of the Legion in Fallout New Vegas, a giant raider faction that's big enough to go up against the NCR, which is the New California Republic, which is kind of like a proper army. So these guys do not mess around. Um, in this deck, it's a Mardu sort of go-eyed token sacrifice deck. So if you like being aggressive, this deck is for you. All right. And uh, let's take a look. We're going to do three preview cards from this deck. So, Chris, tell us about Powder Ganger. Right. So, one of the things to note about the Hail Caesar deck is that it is not a deck, it is not only Caesar's Legion that is represented in this deck. Yeah. But the Hail Caesar deck is kind of the deck that has all of the different sort of raiders and military factions and different kind of more, um, you know, boots on the ground type factions throughout all the Fallout games. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just a you know, sort of New, New Vegas specific. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, we do have here another group from New Vegas, the Powder Gangers. Um, this is a group that you meet very early on. Um, some uh, you know, escaped prisoners with a love of dynamite. Um, but the Powder Gangers here show off the um, kind of the focus mechanic of this deck, which is the squad mechanic. So this is a go wide tokens deck. Uh, the squad mechanic was originally uh, introduced in our Warhammer 40k 
commander decks. Um, but we thought that the mechanic played really well, and it fit both flavorfully and mechanically for this deck. So we decided to bring it back here. So um, the Powder Gangers here, you can you know, pay their squad costs, get a couple, uh, couple different copies of them, and you'll be able to see a couple more squad cards um, you know, tomorrow, I guess, as we reveal more of the deck. Absolutely. All right, our next one is a legendary character. And Annie, tell us about this menacing. Oh yeah, so here is Legate Lanius. Uh, this is Caesar's right-hand man. This guy does not mess around. He's kind of like an end boss of sorts in New Vegas. Um, and here we use the flavor word decimate for his ability, which is the historic uh, interpretation of it, <laughs> where you destroy one-tenth of things. So this guy, is pretty nasty. I don't know what else to say. You got anything to say, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> I, only, only that um, we just had a lot of fun. <laughs> like the decimate ability is something that certainly yeah. a lot of people were like, "Why does it do this?" And we were like, "Oh, well, here's the backstory." And they're like, "That's awesome. Like, we got to keep that in." So um, happy to see it, you know, landing on the final card. Yeah, Caesar and his legion take the Roman LARP very serious. So you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, and our final preview card from this deck, Chris, tell us about Ruinous Ultimatum. Yeah, so again, finding really fun reprints to bring back for these decks, ones that we thought was awesome. We just thought that there was a great opportunity here to have some, you know, like full-on faction art of Caesar's Legion. Mm -hmm. You know, Caesar's Legion is a very brutal faction that, um, again, they take the Roman LARP very seriously. They're trying to, you know, <laughs> brutally take over all of the wasteland. Um, and, you know, like all Fallout games, it's up to the player as to whether or not they decided to, you know, sympathize with their uh, yeah. efforts or not. It's like your ultimatum, in a way. Yeah. It's like, choose. But this certainly, um, this card represents the, you know, the chaos and destruction that they wreak across the wasteland um, mm -hmm. in pursuit of ultimate domination. All right. So those are the four decks. Uh, and again, we're going to be highlighting one each day. Now, we're not done with previews yet. Uh, we are going to show off a few other things. Uh, we're going to talk a bit more about the, the product suite and the collector boosters, which I think we have a product shot that we can put up here. So these are what the collector boosters look like. Um, if you're interested in all the different slots in what's in a collector booster, uh, I highly recommend at the end of the stream heading to dailymtg.com and looking at the Collecting Magic the Gathering Fallout article. That's going to give you all the specific details. It'll break down uh, both what's in the decks as well as what's in the collector boosters. But we're going to talk about some of the special treatments that are in the collector boosters and show off a couple um, pretty sweet cards. So um, let's talk, Annie, about this first card. Yeah. We all know it as Tarmogoyf, but uh, that's not what we know what it is in the Fallout universe. I know, right? So this is a Death Claw. So we basically took like Magic's version of a giant messed up looking lizard creature and Fallout's <laughs> version of one and smashed them together. Uh, and here you go. So we have like nine of these alternate name uh, Pit Boy treatment cards that you can find in the collector boosters. And yeah, we got good old good old Tarmogoyf here. Yeah, and so these are only in the collector booth, yes. correct? Yes. These. And something that I don't think we we mentioned, just for anyone who maybe isn't you know super familiar with the games, is that this view here is your you know heads up display in the game itself. So mm -hmm. like the, you, the, you know um, all of this you know green text on the top and bottom is mm -hmm. sort of what it looks like to play the Fallout games. This is what it would be like if you saw this creature while playing the game, and the frame itself is designed around you know the classic Pip Boy. Yep. All right. Next, we're going to take a look at, um, there is a uh, release promo. So let's take a look. I, uh, some people have already seen this. this. This ended up on the internet a bit ago. But uh, uh, Chris, tell us about War Room. Yeah, so I mean, War Room, a you know, commander-based card that uh, printed a while ago. Commander product, I don't remember. But anyway, very good card, especially for um, you know, commanders that have Fewer colors in their color identity. Um, so a fun card, especially for, you know, for monocolored commander decks. Certainly very popular. Uh, and, you know, again, just finding different reprints that we thought fit well or that we had a cool idea for what to do with. You know, in this case, we see kind of a, um, a somewhat humor. I mean, all the Vault Boy arts are a little bit humorous. But in this case, you know, having everyone, like, you know, around the table here, um, 
in my mind, very uh, dogs playing poker kind of vibes yeah. to it. Yeah, so it was definitely like, we looked for all the cool reprints with the word vault. We looked for all the cool reprints with the word war. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, as, as they say in Fallout, war never changes. Uh, and war is a big theme in the Fallout games. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah. So again, note that that was the release promo. If you show up for the release um, for Fallout, I'm going to read off some dates. Uh, so your local game stores will have those promos. So uh, the global release is March 8th. There's also Commander launch parties at your local game store that weekend, March 8th through 10th. So this is a Commander release, so it doesn't have a pre-release. So March 8th is the date you want to circle in your calendar. Now, we are also going to do some Q&A. We have a little bit of time. Uh, it always helps me to pull questions from chat if you tag at magic at the start of it. I've got a few questions lined up. But before we get to that, we do have one more preview card. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of war. Yeah, speaking, speaking of war. Speaking of war and, and cards with war in <laughs> their title. <laughs> uh, Annie, tell us about Ravages of War. What can I say? We already made the joke. War never <laughs> changes. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to be the villain at your uh, commander group, here you go. Destroy all their lands, even yours. <laughs> Um, you can be that person. <laughs> we, got, we got like a little cute joke to American culture on here. And uh, yeah, just a fun, flavorful reprint that you find in Collector Boosters. You find in Collector Boosters, yep. So this is, what, this is not in the main Commander decks. No. Um, how many of these um, com Collector Booster only uh, cards like this are there? Oh, well, there's these nine Borderless Vault Boy ones, and there's 26 of the Showcase Pip Boy ones. Uh -huh. And there's also the full art basics, which are in the decks already, but yeah. they're also in collector boosters. So. Yeah. yeah, we showed those off at first look. Yeah. Um, so there is going to be a card image gallery again on dailymtg.com. If you're looking for additional info, just head to dailymtg.com after this. Um, there will be a collecting article. There will be the card image gallery. Um, so that's kind of the central place that we put all the content for you to go through after that. Um, but... If you do have questions, we have some experts here. So go ahead and put them in chat. So let's um, start with a couple that I've seen before. So sure. um, uh, pro format legality, what formats are these in? Legacy, right? Because that's Commander. Yeah, so like normal Commander yes. pre-cons, the, the new cards that are introduced will be legal in Commander and Legacy. Um, all reprint cards will be legal in whatever formats they are already legal in. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then there were, let's see. How many cards are only in packs? Annie answered that just a second ago. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Are the collector booster exclusive cards all reprints or are there going to be new cards in there? Um, there either reprints that already existed in Magic, or there are other versions of new cards that are within the deck, so like new Fallout-specific cards. Yeah, right. so there are no new cards that are only found in right. Collector Boosters, mm -hmm. just the art and uh, treatment style yeah. is exclusive to Collector Boosters, yes. Um, okay, uh, who is the bestest boy in the world? I'm just reading straight from <laughs> chat. Rex. I was going to say Rex. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I thought I had the, no the, the um, unpopular opinion. How dare you. Um, shout out to Rex from Fallout New Vegas. Yeah. Um, here's a good question. Were there any other deck ideas that you ended up not going with? That, that's interesting. I would say that, so for some times when we make commander products, it's really challenging to come up with the different themes. Mm -hmm. um, but for this one, so going in, we knew that there were going to be four decks. That was just sort of the, the product that we were making. Um, and Annie came in straight away and was like, here's the four themes. And <laughs> yeah, we did. We never needed to, to go like, back. Yeah. Like af As we made those and as we grabbed all the characters, we felt like these four overarching themes, you know, science and technology, the mutant stuff, the military stuff, and then the sort of protagonist survivors, mm -hmm. um, that, those were really the main categories that captured all of the characters and the moments and the concepts that we wanted to hit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and honestly, at the end, I didn't really feel like we left that much on the table. We were like, oh, we didn't get to it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's plenty of characters. I mean, there's hundreds of characters yeah. in the Fallout universe, so we couldn't hit everyone. But in terms of the ones that we thought were fan favorites, that people would really enjoy seeing, um, I think we got to almost everyone we really wanted to. Right, I hope so. so. <laughs> 
Uh, so here's a question. We, we revealed Mr. House during the, um, during the first look. Uh, the question is, can we expect more dice rolling cards and synergies to work with Mr. House? Uh, there is one other dice rolling card in the house deck, but otherwise, I think it's mostly so you can just go build your own wacky dice rolling thing. Because right. it would be really loud if we made a pre-con that had a bunch of dice rolling, and we really wanted to focus on like the Caesars game plan. So Mr. House is more for like the fans of dice rolling shenanigans. Right. So. Yeah. You'll have to take, you know, Mr. House and build your own deck with him using yeah. other dice rolling cards. It wasn't a theme that we went heavy on in the pre-con itself. No, but I think we were both a little biased having worked on Infinity. It's true. Before Andy this. and I both work on Infinity, I'm so we're like, lovers of dice rolling. And yeah. For for that character, it was just such a great fit. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next up, so chat went a little nuts during the Mutant Menace portion, asking for the master before we re revealed the Guardian project. Mm -hmm. So then someone just straight up asked us, are we getting a the master card? Yes. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, stay what, tuned. <laughs> what, yeah, what day uh, yeah. Um, is the Mutant deck? The Mutant deck is Thursday. Thursday, all right, well. On Thursday. Okay. On Thursday, yes. Y'all <laughs> saw, <laughs> it, what was it, yesterday we got Frank Horrigan, like, you know, we're gonna do the, we're gonna do the mask. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Um, uh, how many different bobbleheads are there? You can say it's okay. There's seven. We did say seven earlier. Yeah. Yes, we, there's we one for more. each letter of special and each stat corresponding to the letter. So. Mm -hmm. um, here's a great question that was in my notes to talk about before we left anyway. So. Uh, will there be any secret layers? And the answer is yes. Yes. And those will be revealed coming up. Not on this show, but uh, yes, there will be Fallout secret layers. Can we say how many? Uh, if you know. I don't actually know how many there are. Three. Three. There we go. All right. That's the set lead right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, are there any surprise return mechanics on new cards? Yes. Yes. Um, you can it, say yes, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, mostly just thinking about I. It's interesting because I, I guess I wouldn't think of them as right. surprises. Well, the first but. one that came to mind was Brad Storm, which we've already right. seen. So, But yeah, I would expect other things like that. Yes, we did, there are definitely going to be other returning mechanics. The, the mechanics we showed off today, we did show off all of the kind of primary mechanics of each of the decks, but there's mm -hmm. certainly going to be a lot of standalone cards um, for flavor or just because we thought it was a clever design. So... Um, yeah, they, they're, they'll definitely see some other old magic mechanics showing up. Mm -hmm. All right. Chris, why don't, uh, because not everybody was here at the start of the stream and, and not everybody caught everything. Um, so the, the question is, are there any Fallout 76 cards? But why don't you just repeat what you said at the beginning about the yeah. breadth of the game? The, yeah, so the, the first card we showed, which was Commander Sophia Daguerre, was a Fallout 76 card. And, um, but generally speaking, all, every deck is in, includes characters from the entire breadth of the Fallout, um, you know, the history of Fallout, the entire franchise. Um, I don't know, I didn't double check, so I don't know if I can fully confirm that every single deck has a character from every single game, but certainly when we were building these, they were not separated out by game. Mm -hmm. They were separated out by theme. So the science deck is going to include, you know, robots and scientists and... Brotherhood you know, of Steel people. Right, yeah. from, from throughout the history, all the way from Fallout 1 to Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. So... Um, no matter which Fallout games are your favorite, no matter which ones you enjoy, there'll probably be something there that you remember and love um, from, you know, from every different game. I will say personally that I was kind of the, when we were making this, we sort of, the various people on the design team kind of broke down of which games are they going to focus on. Because obviously it's a, it's a ton of work if, mm -hmm. if everyone on the design team had to research all of the games and everything. So we did kind of break it down a little bit into different, areas of expertise, mm -hmm. and I was the Fallout 76 person. So like, I, a lot of the Fallout 76 characters that ended up were ones that I personally loved and enjoyed and wanted to see brought in. So I'm hoping that Fallout 76 fans will also enjoy all of these characters that, that we put in from those, those games. Yep. All right. We're going to do a little bit of a lightning round here oh, um, right. because it seems like uh, people in chat have kind of their favorite thing and yep. they want to oh. know, is it going to be in the set? Well, so we'll am just, I even allowed to say? I should we'll just do yes or no. Ooh. You don't. You don't have to say what, to what or the how they're represented. <laughs> okay. Um, yes or no? Is there some aspect of this somewhere in the set? Okay. okay. All right. 
Um, is there anything in the NCR for the NCR? Yes. 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 Um, what about the Kings? Did we get... Rex counts. Rex is, is in there. Okay. So, yes. Um, Joshua Graham. No. No. Okay. Uh, Ulysses. Wait. Okay, this is a little tricky because we have creative text mm -hmm. and some concepts on reprints <laughs> that we aren't 100% up to date on. Does he have a, yeah, I can't, I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. There, yeah, there are some characters <laughs> that show up on reprints yeah. or in the art of spells yeah. that we might not like 100% right? remember just like, because like, you know, they don't have a specific name. It's card. true. It, it's easier to speak to brand new cards that we've made for characters, so. Fair enough. Okay, so there's going to be some representation that yeah. might be in flavor, texture, art. That, yeah, right. exactly. Sorry. <laughs> um, Nuka Cola. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Tunnel snakes. Tunnel snakes rule. Ooh. Yes. Yes. We got some tunnel snakes in there. <laughs> uh, da, 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 gizmo card. Gizmo. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Sorry. I know, uh, I'm just going to look at Chris every time. <laughs> <laughs> President Eden. No, is the, President Eden is represented, I believe, but I don't think that President yeah. Eden. Yeah, yeah, no. I think there's a rep, President Eden representation. There's representation, probably. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Mysterious stranger. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of cards when you yeah, count the reprints. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I, I'm I'm wading into unfamiliar territory here because. I know, don't ask me something that's like not even in the games. Like, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, boon? Get a Boon card? Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. Or Craig? Yeah. <laughs> you I call, call him Craig. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah. Uh, Codsworth. Yeah. Yes. We'll see, and some of these characters, like Boone and Codsworth, we'll be talking about on our panel yeah. at MagicCon Chicago. There you go. Tune in. Yeah. So, and by the way, that panel, if you're not at MagicCon Chicago, we will be putting it on YouTube afterwards. So don't fret if you're, gonna, uh, if you're not going to be there. But if you are going to be there, again, MagicCon Chicago is going to be awesome. We'll give our little pitch for that right now because uh, I was going to do that before the end of the show. Anyway, but MagicCon Chicago kicks off on Friday. And not only do we have the awesome Fallout panel with these two, but leading into that, we're also going to have the preview panel. I'm going to be on that one. Uh, and we are going to be talking about a whopping four sets in that one for first looks. Looking forward throughout the year um, to kind of give uh, stores and distributors a, a first look at those sets. So we're going to talk about that. That one will also be on YouTube, but that's all going to be happening on Friday. Friday is a huge day for Magic on Chicago and for YouTube and, and finding those things afterwards. So um, if you're at Magic on Chicago, be sure to check out those two panels. If you are at home or anywhere else, uh, we will be posting those on the Magic the Gathering YouTube channel after the fact. Um, next week, I'm just going to do all my little announcements right now. Might as yeah, well. Go for it. Uh, next week, Weekly MTG will be off because we'll be traveling back from Magic on Chicago. But we'll be back the week after that to actually play Fallout on stream. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be battling here on stream. So... Uh, you can get a look at how the decks play out against each other uh, right out of the box. So that's going to be a good time. Um, and let's go to, 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 to back to questions if we see any more questions. All right, we're, we're done with the lightning round. Yeah, please, Great. no more yeah. lightning <laughs> round. It ended up harder than I thought. My, my, <laughs> my last little uh, you know push for that panel is that we have a uh, Bethesda artist who will yeah. be there as well, telling some behind the scenes stories of the, about the creation of different Fallout games. So it'll be pretty cool. Come check it out. Yeah. Um, are there any promos at Chicago? Um, do you want to show up to find out? There, there's, there's, there's stuff. Magic on Chicago has so much stuff. Um, it's it's going to be a good time. I've already got chicago -itis. I don't know about you two, but I'm finding work to be difficult to do. <laughs> Magic on Chicago is this week. Um, okay, we are going to end the stream there. Um, thank you for tuning in. Follow-up previews are running all week. Today, Tuesday, uh, we have the Scrappy Survivors deck. And then tomorrow, we are going into Hail Caesar, followed by Mutant Menace on Thursday. 
and ending the week as we should with an exclamation mark with science, 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 science at the MagicCon Chicago panel and around the internet. Uh, head to dailymtg.com to check out all of that information, the where to find article, the collecting article, the card image gallery. All of that is going to be your central repository for all that information. Thank you to Annie and Chris. You're going to see more of them later this week. Sure. Uh, so thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you soon. It's a good time. Bye.